Mark, Mark in Seattle. Hi, Mark. Hey, Norm, it's Mark Taylor Canto. I must warn you, though, that I'm dripping with sarcasm today, so do you have your drum sample ready? I've got everything ready. I have no clue. <laughs> I've got it all ready. Go ahead. Okay, first the bad news, then the bad news, all right? All right. This is Mark Taylor Canto reporting from beautiful downtown Seattle, home of Starbucks, Boeing, Microsoft, legal marijuana, the $15 an hour minimum wage, and pepper spray. This is a very potent weapon. We had another May Day mashup between the protesters and police last night, something that's becoming an annual ritual in the Emerald City. And also, I must have finally made it, Norm, because I was a guest on both the Randy Rhodes show and the Tom Hartman show in the last 24 hours, talking about the 15 hour an hour minimum wage. You know, and that was one of the stories I had that I set aside because I wanted to get back to the phones. Can you just tell everybody what's going on with that minimum wage issue in Seattle? Yeah, by the way, I'm really sad that Randy's going out the air, but that's another uh, It makes two of us. Yeah, well, in Seattle, the city council was basically given this uh, initiative by our new council member, Shama Sawant, who I was hanging out with yesterday, to uh, raise the minimum wage in Seattle to $15 an hour. So the mayor uh, appointed a income inequality task force, which has done nothing but fight amongst themselves since it was formed. And so, therefore, the city council has kind of fallen down on the job. And Shama Sawant is saying that the mayor's proposal, which has these long phase-in periods, is just not going to be adequate. So there is a charter amendment now filed in Seattle for a citywide ballot initiative in November, and they have to raise 50,000 signatures, I think by July, but that will put it on the ballot. And that was a perfect political strategy because they said, look, if the city council wants to take responsibility and credit for pushing this initiative through, then we're ready to go. But if not, the agreement was by April, if the city council hadn't moved, which they didn't, and there would be a charter amendment filed. So it's ready to go, and it has some uh, major compromises, but it might help get it passed, which is a three-year phase-in for small businesses. The only issue with that, Norm, is that the definition of a small business in this charter amendment is actually 250 employees or less, which is not completely accurate. It probably should be net profit, because if you think about it, a consulting firm with four or five people could be making, making million-dollar contracts. So that's the only issue, but it will be on the ballot if the Seattle City Council does not pass it within the next few weeks. Isn't the idea, or at least part of the idea, to kind of spark this, to make it happen as a wave across the rest of the country? I mean, isn't that one of the explicit things the mayor's talking about? Yes, he did. In fact, it's a cover story on the Seattle Times today, the mayor's new initiative on the $15 an hour minimum wage. So he's agreed, let's do it. The only disagreement on how to do it, and you're right, it is spreading across the country. There are $15 an hour minimum wage campaigns in all sorts of states now, and the first ever national $15 an hour minimum wage conference was held over the weekend here in Seattle. So it is a national issue. The Huffington Post has a big, art, big article about it. You can read about it all over the place now. It's big news across the country. Mark, I really appreciate the report. I thank you very much. i got to move along, but I love the idea of a $15 minimum wage in Seattle. You will lead the way, and I'm really glad you're there and reporting for us. You are straight ahead, right here where justice is served, the Norman Goldman Show. Who am I? I ask you to give me 20 minutes a day for two weeks, and probably not even that. 20 minutes a day for one week. If you can listen for an hour a day for a week, I think you'll enjoy what it is we're doing here. This is the Norman Goldman Show. I want to tell you one more thing I know about the name. Screw the bad, bad man. Deal with it. Attention homeowners, Quicken Loans has some important information regarding the U.S. government's Home Affordable Refinance Program, or HARP. We've told you about HARP in the past, and nearly 3 million homeowners have already taken advantage of this money-saving program. And I just posted on it at Facebook, the Norman Goldman Show on Facebook, in our blog, the Justice View blog at normangoldman.com, and it's in our Twitter feed at Norman Goldman. General Motors finally growing a brain like, hello, public relations disaster. Maybe we should not have a public relations disaster. To the phones we go at one 321 6001 I apologize for my voice. I have a cold. It's not a bad one, but it is making me sound weird. Joe in Chicago. Hi, Joe. Hi. A lot of stories today, but the one thing that really got me going today was the illustration of how poorly 
the Democratic Party continues to be on getting a strong message out and with the talking points. And that started with the great job numbers that were released. Right. 288,000 today. I'm going to write down to 6.3. And what, and immediately you hear all through the airways, including NPR, how it's um, offset with this loss of people that have disappeared from the job market. Meanwhile, what the Democrats should have had going was that, of course, there's people disappearing from the job market because the ACA has allowed people to voluntarily withdraw from full-time jobs because they now have health insurance. And in early February, the Congressional Office budget released a report saying two million people will withdraw from the job market now that they have access to health insurance. Truthout has an article saying this is happening. This should have been being promoted so that as soon as these numbers come out, everybody's saying part of this is because people can leave their jobs because of the health insurance. I'll go you one step further, Joe. Not only do I completely agree with you, but the Democrats should be using the Republicans' own two-word soundbite against them and saying that they have freedom and liberty now. What the Affordable Care Act gave workers was freedom and liberty. They now can go off and live their dreams. So, of course, they're leaving their jobs because they're not slaves to a health benefit provided by their employer. And so they've got freedom and liberty. But, Joe, you're so right. The Democrats' messaging is awful. And they always are caught flat-footed when the Republicans come back with their little, you know, snotty uh, little phrase. And the Democrat, Joe, I, you know, I don't know what's the matter with these people. For 30 years plus now, the Republicans have been eating their lunch. Joe, I appreciate the call, and you make a great point. Alpho, Alpho, I know who you are. Hi. Hey, how you doing, Norman? I am well. Thank you for calling. Uh, first thing, Norm, um, um, the caller that you had, what's his name, Lonnie or Leon? Lonnie. I don't, Lonnie, okay. I don't totally disagree with what he's saying, but what he does is, he pushes the narrative, the conservative narrative, and he talks about the temperature in the African-American community, rather than speak about the thermostat. Who set the thermostat for the conditions that we are dealing with right now? And the conditions that we're dealing with, we have parents of children who, um, who have been miseducated themselves, giving their children to a self-responsibility and pull themselves up by their bootstraps is not going to happen when uh, our community has been miseducated over generations. And starved of resources. I mean, the schools are well, in terrible shape and all, you know, there's no support network at all. Well, I'm here in Chicago. We just closed 50 schools, but they are advocating opening 17 new charter schools. Right. So when you get to that scenario, when you get to this type of situation, you can't expect to speak about the temperature in a community without first acknowledging who and how the thermostat is set. You know, Norm, you also speak about uh, the messaging. Alpha, can I ask you to hold on for me? Can I ask you all? I gotta take a break, but here's what we're gonna do. Normally, I've got segments set up with pieces, and I do. I'm setting it aside. I want to come back to Alpha, and I want to come back to you. If you're on hold, don't leave me. I'm coming to you straight ahead, right here. I want to hear what you've got to say next? With justice is served. Hi, thanks for being with me on our website at normangoldman.com or our app streaming through normangoldman.com. Don't forget the apps now. I hope you know that we have a YouTube channel. You can go to youtube.com, The Norman Goldman Show, and you will find something like 55 different items, many of them videos. I sat in this studio with a camera guy, a video director, and we did a series of YouTube videos on law, civics, politics, all kinds of stuff. It's me in a suit sitting here just talking right into the camera, talking to you. One thing that's really lacking very often in our public discourse is like actual facts. I mean, like knowledge, information. And that's what I've tried to do here on the Norman Goldman Show is to teach with actual facts, actual knowledge, actual information. I think you'll find those YouTube videos to be very educational. They are free at YouTube.com. Now, YouTube puts maybe a little ad for 30 seconds or whatever in front 
none of it. That's YouTube making money for providing me their server space. I don't get any of that cash. But if you can sit through the little pre-roll, and that's what the thing is called, I think you'll find those little YouTube videos to be very helpful. One video that is the most popular is how to hear our show in your car, in your car speakers, through your stereo, in excellent digital quality. Anywhere you can get a smartphone or cell phone signal, you can hear our show live and free and anywhere. That video is only six minutes long. It's at YouTube.com, The Norman Goldman Show on YouTube. All you got to do is follow the instructions. I made it very simple. I made it very easy. This is a smartphone. This is an auxiliary cable. This is a car. You plug this this into this, this into this, you press that button and away we go. I think you'll find that it's very easy and very simple to use today's technology to get our show live, free, and anywhere in your car speakers as if we were on a radio station. Please give it a try. YouTube.com, The Norman Goldman Show. are changing. It's not a traditional the American anymore. The home of fierce independence, intelligent dialogue, and passionate logic is right here, right now. Binders full of uh, women. Chicken crap. America, this is the dispenser of fairness. This is the unfiltered truth. This is Norman Goldman. Now, if that's not high pollutant, high end intellectual conversation, I don't know what is. Thank you for being with me. One hour to go. Yes, I have a cold. There's nothing wrong with your ears. My voice is a little impaired. But it's just a cold. There's nothing very seriously wrong with me. It's not a tumor. I don't have a tumor, although the news today is Donald Sterling, the owner of the Clippers, has been battling has been battling prostate cancer. And therefore, what role that will play in his selling the L.A. Clippers after this week's racism issues with him is another question entirely. My first thought would be that he was going to fight because that's all Donald Sterling has ever done. He's a lawyer and very litigious. There you go again. Well, there he'd go again. Uh, but with him battling prostate cancer, and apparently it's a couple of years on now, uh, and maybe he will just sell the Clippers and get his affairs in order before he moves on to the next world. Uh, but, but... The big news of the day, the big news. 288,000 jobs were added in April, the best month since January 2012, shattering expectations of 210,000 more jobs. The unemployment rate fell four notches to 6.3%. That's the lowest in five and a half years. Now, that's Chris Jansing of MSNBC, and we thank MSNBC for that and for this. When we look inside the numbers, there were job gains all across the board last month. Office jobs, construction, retail, restaurants all saw significant gains. Well, there you go. There's your big number. And by the way, these were very broad-based uh, job growth. Broad-ranging growth. So you look at professional business services. You look at education and health. You look at construction. These are all middle and upper middle class uh, jobs, and, and you see very broad-ranging growth. Now, that is Labor Secretary Thomas Perez, of course, wanting to put a good spin on it. But these were very broad-based job gains, and this is very good news. Average job growth in the last three months, 238,000. These are very good numbers. We still have to do more. And yes, again, 72,000 Americans lost unemployment benefits this week. And the Republicans and House of Representatives will do nothing for them. All they want to talk about is Benghazi, which we spoke about extensively in the last hour. And if you've missed today's show, it's another hot one. $5 a month gets you the entire show commercial free at normangoldman.com. It's called podcasting, but you can also think of it as just on demand. An hour boils down to 38 minutes when we strip everything out, and you get all the extra Beyond the Norm segments, including tonight's, which is a very disgraceful and very unknown little chapter in American history about 100 years ago. Uh, we tell that story tonight in our extra segment for our Beyond the Norm subscribers. The Beyond the Norm segments, all part of your $5 a month or $50 for one year package. 
Now, I had a couple of other stories prepared, but I've given short shrift to our callers at one 321 6001 because we've had a very busy show today. So I'm setting aside those other segments. We'll hold those until Monday. And I want to come back to Alpho. Alpho, I know you. You do a talk radio show yourself, don't you? Uh, yes, I do, Norm. Um, as a matter of fact, um, your guest, uh, Ms. Janice Graham, is the CEO of the TruthWorks Network that I broadcast from on Friday evening. Um, I can, uh, let me say this. So, when you get down to the messaging of Democrats 20, 30 years ago, and Republicans play a long game, and they've played a long game, the longest. They have infiltrated the progressive liberal movement with Wall Street Democrats. Uh, Clinton was one. Obama is one. Schumer. Dirksen. I mean, you can go down the list. Durbin. Durbin. The number of progressive liberal Democrats that are left are very, very sparse, very few. And it's because these Wall Street Democrats, first there were the Blue Dogs, and once we kind of got rid of some of the Blue Dogs, now we've got the Wall Street Democrats. How do you define liberal and progressive, Alpha? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. How do you define well, liberal and progressive? I look at liberals as people who are not afraid to share. You can make as much money as you want, but pay your fair share. We've got trillions of dollars sitting offshore. Liberals didn't make that happen. We've got uh, corporations sitting on trillions and won't hire. Everything that has been said about what the, all of the speculation from the right has fallen flat on its face. And all they have left is scandal, innuendo, and propaganda. If you listen to them, they'll tell you that they give away lots and lots and lots of money, that they, in fact, the statistics are that Republicans give much more to charity than Democrats. They tell you that they are extremely generous, and and so your accusation or your, your definition of Democrats is saying share the wealth, they'd say, hey, we're, we're better at it than the Democrats are. Well, the Democrats have a serious messaging problem. Anytime you can't disseminate the obvious, what have Republicans blocked for the last five years? And there's a long list. What have they championed for the last five years? It's been detrimental to the middle class America. And it's just so unfortunate that so many Americans are consumed with hatred and bitterness and ugly. When they talk about the post-racial racial experience, it's, it, 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 it's meaningless because they have tapped into the hatred and the ire of a lot of people in this country. And they're manipulating people with code words. Paul Ryan out there talking about the inner city and, and no initiative and lack of drive. I mean, everybody knows what the guy is saying, but he's not well, he's not as ham-handed about it as Clive and Bundy and Donald Sterling. But that's why Paul Ryan should have been coupled right in with the Bundy and the Sterling because he basically says the same thing. It's a dog whistle. It's a dog whistle from, what was the gentleman's name? Um, from the, uh, Atwater. Lee Atwater. Lee Atwater, yeah. Oh, geez. 1988, Willie, uh, what was it, Willie Brown? No, not Willie Brown. I See, I, I should be able to remember this, right? Willie uh, Lynch. No, it wasn't Willie Lynch, but uh, I know the emails are going to come pouring in, Alvo. But, Alvo, here, here's the thing. I, I would love for you to call me again. I want to talk to you some more about this. We've got to do this in little chunks and bits. 
Uh, but I know who you are. You do a great talk show at the Blog Talk Radio. The link, by the way, for Janice Graham, we're with her in the first hour, and if you missed it, it's free at normangoldman.com. It's up on our Facebook page, uh, the Norman Goldman Show on Facebook. It's in our blog, the Justice for You blog. Check out all the great folks they've got over there. These are voices that have been shut out from commercial radio. And, and you should check them out. There's a lot of great stuff out there on the Internet. Uh, and I'm a big fan of Janice Graham and Alpha. There's a lot of people out there with a lot of very good things to say that are not getting heard. And so I'm trying to give some exposure here to our colleagues who, uh, you know, just don't get access. Harvey in Berkeley. Hi, Harvey. Hi, Norm. Well, um, how are you today? It sounds like a great show. Who was the guy, Harvey, in 1988 that, that with Michael Dukakis who got let out of jail? That Willie uh, Willie Horton. That's the guy, Willie Horton. That was the guy that Lee Atwater, who God got his revenge on by killing him with brain cancer at age 39, and then and then the Lee Atwater, who was George Herbert Walker Bush's top guy, who designed the Willie Horton, the scary black man's coming out of prison. That
Sims.